All right, thanks for being here today. Um, you know, we closed the chapter on uh, last week's game uh, last night, had a good meeting. Um, you know, I couldn't be more proud of the guys in the room, you know, the guys in the building, you know, coaches, you know, as players as well. I mean, uh, our scout team, our, you know, just all around. Uh, it's a heck of a team win. And I know it's a coach cliche talking about team wins and all that all the time, but it's fact. It really is. And it's not just coach talk. Um, you know, from you know the, the scout team in the back. If we don't get a good look during the week, uh, which we think we we got a pretty darn good look, um, you know, uh, it doesn't happen. So, um, you know, just happy with the efforts in this building. Um, you know, one what, what of the number one keys to victory that I kind of brought up to our guys um, during the week and you know, and on Friday night and Saturday was you know just composure. You know, sometimes these rivalry games can get you so pumped up. You know, that. Um, that you you know you you lose yourself and you, you know you don't play like you need to be, you know I felt like composure. You know when I asked him to just be you know don't get too high, don't get too low. You know Coach Junk always talked about <laughs> never getting too high, never get too low. Uh, low just saw that wood, and I felt like maybe we got too high at times. Um, you know we did uncharacteristic stuff that uh, I hadn't seen our guys do this season so far. Um, you know we had seven unforced errors as I told our team last night, and it wasn't good enough. I mean seven of them. You know, three on offense, three on defense, I believe, and, and uh, one on special teams where, you know, just the tiny fine details. I mean, um, I, you know, offensively, I don't think we've had a false start all, all year. And then all of a sudden we got, you know, three of them in one game, you know, or at least receivers aren't set. Quarterback snapping it before the receiver's set. Just anxious, I guess. So those are some things that, uh, you know, disappointed, obviously. A lot of drive starters, I think, you know, of the penalties we had them offensively, almost every one of them was on a first down. Um, and I think I told you guys back in August we had uh, – you know, we had our first scrimmage offensively. You know, we had so many penalties on first down that just it just kills drives, and that's why the defense beat the offense in our first scrimmage in fall camp was because of those drive killers. And we've got to eliminate that. We got to get back to you know who we are and, and have composure there. So you know, um, you know those, those unforced things and just you know uh, at times lack of focus on you know different deals, whether it's you know playing with ten guys on our punt return team. Um, you know, just some of those things that we just hadn't seen for. Uh, for you know the, the, the prior two games, and then all of a sudden they appear at a day where there's a lot of things going on, and, and, and you're excited. So um, you know uh, we're going to be excited about this game this weekend. So we move into Youngstown State Week. Uh, Doug Phillips, heck of a coach, uh, been doing it for a long, long time. He's done it all over the place. Uh, Youngstown State, a playoff team a year ago, um, uh, beat Duquesne um, in uh, in the first round of the playoffs a year ago. You know, happened to get beat by Duquesne last weekend. Um, you know they got they got beat by Villanova in the uh, in the playoffs last year, and uh, again you know play Villanova in the opener this year. So uh, we know what kind of you know FCS football is. We know what one AA football is. I played it. You know Des Reed played it. CJ Lee played it. You know Poppy Williams played it. Um, we got some darn good football players in this. We got some darn good football players at 12:02. Chris, uh, but we got some darn good football players in this room that are, you know, FCS players. So I think, you know, um, you know, when you, first thing you look at is, is respect, and I respect every one of our opponents. And you know, I look down the roster, I watch videotape. This is a good football team, and and um, again, a playoff team. So uh, we're excited about the opportunity to, um, you know, to get into this week and, and get game planning. Uh, you know, Bo Bumgard is uh, their quarterback. Um, you know, starts offensively. Um, you know, they'll personnel you a little bit. You know, they're going to be in, you know, 11 personnel, tight end in the back, three receivers. They'll be in 12 personnel. They'll be in some 21 personnel, which we don't see much of, two backs and, and a tight end out there. Uh, so they'll personnel, uh, personnel you. Uh, Bo's older brother, I think, was a four-year starter at Youngstown State. So there's some lineage there as far as, um, you know, what we're going to play against. Uh, he's athletic, um, and uh, he can run with the ball. He can hurt you, hurt you with his feet. Uh, they like to carry. I think they got 19 keepers in our breakdown uh, this year, um, where the quarterback's just going to take it and run, and, and they're going to block for him. So he's a good player. Um, you know, they got two um, really good tailbacks, uh, King and, and Wright, um, guys that think carry the ball. One is a Cincinnati transfer um, that's got a lot of talent as well. So um, you know, they 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 like to. They're you know obviously a run heavy offense, um, in, in so much that they are leading. I think the the country. Um, in time possession, you know, shoot, they had the ball for 41 minutes last week against Duquesne, and they're averaging having the ball for 37 minutes. So, 
Um, you know, that's been one of, you know, we're, we're, we're not leading the country in time possession. We're probably last in the country in time possession because we haven't had the ball. We scored a lot of points when we have had it, but like we need to possess the ball. They're going to try to play keep away with us. So, you know, we, we've, we, you know, we can't start slow. We must start fast and, and, and keep the ball. Um, and, uh, and then offensive line wise, they've got 100 career starts, 125 career starts on their offensive line. So they're experienced up front. They're going to, you know, maul you off the ball. Um, which, if you look at 125 starts, you know, divided by five starters from left tackle to right tackle, that means they're averaging 25 starts per guy up on that offensive line. So, um, and then defensively, you know, John Hanline runs the defense. Uh, really good football coach. Um, again, very similar to what we play defensively, except probably minus some of the blitzes. But uh, gonna play real sound coverage. Play four down. Uh, so we're back to some more four down than what we've been the last two weeks with, with the three down stuff. So there'll be some good carryover as far as what we do every day in this program and what, what they're going to see. Um, so with that, I'll stop talking and let you guys uh, have some questions. Yeah, the nature of, of these two victories in the past two weeks and circumstances around does it help you maintain the edge you need, or is it tough to maintain that tense edge week after week? Well, you know, I'm hopefully going to create an edge. Um, you know, um, you know, one of our DBs came up to me after our team meeting last night and said, Coach, smile. We won the game. OK, so if that gives you any indication. That's the first time in 10 years, you know, I've had a player come up to me and say, smile. We won the game like because I wasn't very happy because it's not like again, winning's great. That's great. OK, we won. The game's over. We sang the fight song in the, in the locker. But like, let's get back to what we do. And, and, it, and there was a lot of crap on the field that I didn't like, and that's fact. So that's going to create our edge, I think, starting there, um, because it, you know, again, winning is everything. Okay, we can play crappy and win the football game, but like, did we play the way we wanted to play? Did we play the way you're supposed to be coached to do? Is that what we're asking you to do? No, and, and we got to clean it up. So, you know, the way we won those two last two games, you know, that's great. We found a way to win. We blue faced it, um, but, um, you know. We can't get used to that. We can't wait and think that you know we can be comfortable and think that it, you know we'll just win it in the fourth quarter. It doesn't matter what happens in first, second, third. So that was the conversation we had last night. That you know it, it doesn't get you till it gets you. And you know we don't want to be sitting in this room going, "I wish I would have played a better first quarter." Um, you know, anywhere. So th those are the things we you know had conversation wise. So I th think I answered your question. Maybe was that DJ by chance? Of course. <laughs> Were you in the room? Well, I was in, but. Um, I wanted to what, ask, you tweet something last night, like Coach is grumpy, or what? No, it's just, that was just a guess based on personalities. Um, but I wanted to ask about your run defense. It looked like your defensive tackles were getting good push, and there was like problems, I guess, fitting the linebackers with that push. Is there a chemistry that needs to be built between, like, hey, sometimes maybe it's not about pushing, it's about occupying multiple linemen, or maybe it's about how the linebackers are pressing the run? We want the penetration. We got to get in perfect alignments. There's times when we don't have perfect alignments in the linebacker position. It's it's it's, it's sometimes, um, you know, we, we we don't step properly as linebackers. Our read steps are slow, um, but we want penetration. Some of that, you know, like you know, Nick James was the best at penetrating. He made you know, he got a couple of TFLs, I think, or at least one. But he's causing havoc in the backfield. We want to attack you and penetrate you, cause havoc, and then it makes it easy on linebackers. We we'll clear a lot of things up for them. We're not we're not going to be like grab on to guys. And hold on to him. You know, to me, we're not, we're not that style. That's not who we want to be. That's um, that's that's no fun um, for a defense to play like that and just say, hey, you 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 play in that a gap, that center to guard. Don't let them. Just hold on to him and don't let him get the backer. Let the backers run through. We're not. That's not who we are. That's not who we want to be. You don't get sacks that way. You don't get TFLs. We want to be attacking. Uh, we want to be aggressive, but we want to play with good techniques as well. And uh, that's not done all the time in there. And, you know, we'll continue to get better. I think again, we got a lot of young guys. I told you, we got different guys in there this year. And you know, we had three old men last year, um, and uh, we got three young guys, or four young guys, or five young guys that have played some football in there. And uh, they'll just continue to get better. But uh, you know, uh, you know, we'll be okay. Again, they, you know, they average a little under four yards per carry by average. And again, I'm talking per carry. Probably the biggest problem we had was with. Um, the draw last week, which we won't have that problem again. It's just, and again, it's D tackles rushing their business. I mean, we had some twist games on, and they're rushing it and opening up the A gaps. They're making it worse. So again, it's it's details that are and again. So you know, really, it's a pass game run that was got us the most. Um, and uh, and again, I think when you look at it defensively, we gave up four explosives. Our goal is four or less. There's only four big plays. 
uh, in the game. So, you know, offensively we had 10. That's our goal. We had four on, on, gave up four on defense, and we met both of our goals as far as explosives, which, you know, one of our other keys of victory was to win the explosive play, and we did that. Pat, at your quarter of the way through the season, what do you think you've learned about your team so far? Probably the same thing you you have, Amanda. Uh, you know, I've learned that um, you know they're going to find a way to get it done. I think you know, character-wise, you know, I think that, you know there's a there's a, a major care factor in here. I think this football team's got goals and aspirations of what they want to do. Um, you know, like last night, I told them, hey, everything you want to do is right there. Right, you're sitting there right now, going into game four and trying to be one and zero this week. It's all right there in the palm of your hand. Like, what are you going to do? You know, are you going to stay on the same routine you did last week? You know, this week. You know, all those little things. I mean, it's just it's one week at a time. And, you know, we're in a one one game season. And, and um, you know, I, I, I find that they're serious about it. And, and uh, there's not a laissez-faire kind of attitude at all. It's they're, they're locked in. So we'll yeah. find out. They got to be locked in every week. I think after all three games, you mentioned the pass protection is exactly what you want. Do you find those areas are more mental or physical? Um, more physical right now from what I saw the other day. Um, you know, um, again, giving up five sacks, you know, not happy. You know, Coach Darvaux's not happy. Coach Bell's not happy. I think I told you Coach Bell was upset after the game. He couldn't even smile, which I, lo that's, I love that. Just like I didn't smile last night, he's not smiling. Nobody's satisfied, and I think that's, you know, that's uh, really where we are right now. But, you know, the pass protection's not good. And again, you know, they got good players and all that, but, you know, we didn't play well, you know, um, up front, you know. And, um, you know, and again, you win the game and you don't play well up front. And that was another th th other key to victory, Larry. The other key to victory was, you know, we got to win up front. And, uh, you know, offense line wise, we did not win up front like we needed to. And, and that'll get corrected. I, you know, again, I love winning when you don't win up front. It's nice to win and not play your best. And then you guys have played YSU in the past, but given your history with the school, your dad coaching there, you playing there as a freshman, does this game hold any? major significance for you being able to play? No doubt. I mean, <laughs> there's no question about it. It's, it's, it's significant for me, uh, but I'm not playing the game. I get to stand on the sideline with a you know, hat on and, and, uh, and uh, coaching shoes. But, uh, you know, I don't play the game. But, you know, it's, it's, you know, certainly it's one of those games. You know, I grew up there. You know, I grew up in Youngstown. I uh, was a ball boy this big. I got, I got, I got video for you. Um, and, uh, you know, ball boy this big. And, and, uh, you know, just like that's, that's, that's how I grew up, you know, right there. I mean, when you talk about, you know, third grade, I think, is when we moved there. So, I mean, that's kind of, that was in my blood. That's kind of why I'm a coach. Um, you know, dad was your hero. And, and uh, that's what, it, I mean, yeah, there's, it's significant. Last week, uh, I think Kate talked about Eli needed to trust more. You need to trust the receivers, trust the, the game plan more. And Eli even talked about it after the game on Saturday. <clears throat> is is part of that? It seems like he's holding on to the ball a little bit. Is that leading to some of those sacks? Is that still that thing he needs to develop? Is that trust in his receivers? Yeah, a little bit. And again, I think he trusts them, but it's one thing to say I trust you. I trust you, Chris. Okay, but you know you're seeing a guy run with him downfield. It's it's making that throw. I mean, there's a couple times if he trusts and just throws it out there and takes, you know. And again, it's hard. Did he trust Dejon Reynolds on that pass? He must have. It was like three guys on him, and he trusted. He threw it up there and. and and, you know, to me, that's a trust play, and he trusted Dejan to go make that play. He threw it up there. He doesn't do that all the time. Um, but, uh, you know, sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad, you know. Uh, sometimes it can cause you to get sacked. Sometimes you don't get the explosive play you want. But I tell you this, you know, uh, one of the other keys to victory was protect the football. And, you know, we we're plus two coming out of there, plus a block punt and a touchdown. So you can count that as three turnovers. That's like an interception for a touchdown on third down. Uh, although, you know, EJ and the sports information don't count, count it as another turnover. That's a turnover for a touchdown. Um, but we're really plus three in the turnovers. I mean, and, you know, sometimes that trust can get you into trouble. Well, I thought you were going to be there, and, you know, the other guy made the catch. So, um, you know, be careful what you wish for. You know, it's one of those, he's, you know, he's protect the football, and, and that's, that's, that's primary number one. And, um, and the rest will come. I mean, you know, he's game three in, going on number four. Talked about the composure of the team. Uh, what does it say about Eli that he was able to be so composed? I mean, he's 19 years old. This is what three games of his collegiate career, and two of them have been come from behind. What can you say about that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, two two out of three come from behind. Um, it tells you a lot about him. I mean, just you know, he's going to make those plays, and he's going to trust it when he needs to trust it. 
Um, and again, fourth quarter, you know, going back to Chris Peak's question there, um, you know, that he trusted in the fourth quarter when he had no choice but to trust him, right? But he was being careful with the ball, and, you know, in the first three quarters. Um, but, you know, that'll come with time, you know, that he trusted. But, you know, um, you know, Elias has shown a lot of um, – a lot of poise in the pocket and a lot of, you know, composure on the sideline. And, um, you know, we'd like where he is. Was it an easier throw for him to make with three guys covering Dejan? Was it an easier throw? Or was there another guy who might have been open? Um, I don't remember. I was just watching the one guy. Yeah, there was a there was a drag route on the backside that was wide open underneath. Um, I forget about the two slides. You know, it was three by, three by one. Um, I forget, but I just know the backside we had a drag that, that was wide open that we could have, you know, checked it down to and hit a run for 20. Um, but, you know, he threw it to the right guy. And again, you know, you think about, you know, where he threw it, when he threw it, just the time, you know, you're running out of time of possessions and, 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 um, and time to, you know, get another possession with the football. So to me, you know, we could have scored on that drive. I think we would have scored on that drive, but it was going to be that quick if we threw it underneath. Um, so timing is everything. Kyle, uh, Kyle Lewis, Machine Biles are seem like they're playing well. They're putting up a lot of numbers. How are they down to down, snap to snap, the consistency, the responsibility, and all of that? They're pretty good. I mean, they're you know, um, you know, there's a play here and there, and you know, you're reading you know your keys, and sometimes your you know keys lie to you, or sometimes you know, it's a muddy key as far as what they do. But those two guys are playmakers. Um, you know, it seems like every week it's, it, there's a fight to say who's the who's the best one out of those two right now because they they are. Uh, um, playing at a high level, um, and again, um, you know they're, they're they're different than what we had a year ago at that outside backer spot. They're making more plays. They're 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 aggressive. They pull the trigger, um, and and they don't hesitate. And you know I think to me one of the keys I learned as a young linebacker is you know you can't hesitate in this game. If you hesitate, you make no plays. You just sit in the middle doing nothing. Those two pull the trigger and uh, are explosive, um, and they're playmakers. Pat, you said last week you didn't want to. Um rotate some of the guys on defense. You didn't like that against Cincinnati. Um, I don't think Donovan came off the field at all. I think Kyle Lewis maybe came off for one play after he went down. Rasheem played about 80% of the snaps. Um, how important have those three been when you're not getting the stop up front to have those three guys on the secondary levels of defense? Yeah, I mean, you know, again, we, we count, you know, Donovan McMillan, depending on the formation, um, as, a, as a run fitter. I mean, he's a run fitter because he's in the box. And all three of those linebackers, the D line, four D linemen aren't going to make the play every time, you know, to your point. Uh, but those guys are, you know, those guys, that's why they're in there. That's why they're not coming out. They're the fixers, okay? The D line does, you know, uh, Chris asked later, the D line, you know, attacks the line of scrimmage and, and is, you know, being aggressive up front. And those backers' job are to fix, you know, fix the hole, find the hole, okay? Uh, linebackers do no different, and, and Donovan McMillan doesn't treat it any different than the linebackers do. Their job is to find the hole. Um, and the, the, the holes are be created. You know, you want offensive linemen turning around, looking to see where that D tackle went. Um, but they're the fixers, and you need guys that you know will will go find those holes. And the linebackers' job, safety job, is no different than a tailback job, except the tailback's got the ball in his hand. We don't have the ball in our hand on defense. We're just finding that ho that hole and trying to hit it. And you know, some people think it looks like a blitz at times, but um, it's just them reading their keys fast and playing fast. So does that mean with the run defense right now? You guys are looking. Hey, how can we fit our linebackers in those right holes at the right time or get them to see those holes fast? Yeah, and efficiently get there. You know, it's efficiency. I mean, you'll watch times, you know, Chris, sounds like you're watching a lot of videotape that these linebackers are doing this. Well, you take a false step, it just takes that. I mean, you got to be stepping, you know, with the right foot and gaining ground and all those fine little details is, um, you know, and then you got to blitz the right hole when you got to blitz. Don't blitz the wrong hole. Um, you know, there's a, there's A gaps and B gaps and C gaps, and you better hit the right one. Seems like there's always a different player making a big play these past two wins. And what does it mean to have those guys? No matter who goes in, it seems like they're going to make a play when it matters most. Yeah, I mean that's what good football teams do. Um, if you only have one guy you can throw it to, or uh, you only have one linebacker that can make a play, well, they're going to run the other way, and they're going to double cover that receiver. So you you have to have it's you know it's called personnel and, and doing a pretty good job recruiting. Um, and getting the right guys in the program, which again, you know, I think I mentioned this last fall or last uh, you know December January, just with our recruiting class, that I think we made our roster better. You know, I think whether it's through high school recruiting or, or through the you know the transfer portal, 
you know, you have some guys leaving, you have some guys come in, and, you know, we, you know, overall made the thing better than what it was. What did you think of the student section support on Saturday? I'm sorry? The student section, what did you think of their support on Saturday? Oh, the Panther Pit was outstanding. Um, you know, um, again, I don't peek up there very often. I came gave some high fives at the end there. Um, you know, just you know, with, with some of the folks down there in the the, uh, the end zone there, but uh, they were they were outstanding. Need them again this weekend. I uh, appreciate you asking. Um, you know, again, the game is no fun. You know, without the fans, the, the game is no fun without you know uh, a rowdy student section that we have. Uh, I think it's one of the best in the country when you look at the you know, the population of of you know what we have. Sixteen thousand students at the University of Pittsburgh. To see that many show up there, I mean, you're talking, uh, that's a lot. You know, there's places that have 75,000 students, period. You know, 70,000, 60,000 students. We don't have that population. But you look at the percentage of, you know, of our Panther pit that shows up and is there and stayed to the end and is, is, is helping our football team win um, is, is incredible. And, I, you know, and I'll go back and say, we, you know, we all experienced football with nobody in the stands, okay, COVID. That was awful, okay. And I think it was hard to, you know, have any energy as a football player. Um, as a coach, it was kind of like, this is awful. And you're sitting there looking around, you know, at empty seats. But uh, to have our, our fans there like they are, uh, and again, we expect that we got homecoming this weekend, uh, Youngstown coming in, and should be another um, nice event to attend. You mentioned, you the, the, final point. You mentioned the, the big plays from different players in that third quarter, offensively, only negative two yards, but you come up with points on the Maverick block and then the Brandon. That was big. It was even bigger after they faked the punt with 10 guys on the field. And the, the, the guy that's supposed to secure the punt and make sure he punts it, you know, would have been off that edge. So, um, you know, even big, bigger after that because it was like, huh, that ain't, you know, you give up, you know, usually after a fake punt like that, you're going to, you know, it's a momentum change and, and you're going to give up points. But, uh, you know, it went the other way. How did that happen? Last one, Jerry. We'll what's, <laughs> what's that? I mean, I know it's like chaos on the sideline, but I'm just wondering how that happened. Chaos on the sideline. Lack of focus? Yeah. Yeah. You know, so we straightened that up last night, too. Hopefully, you know, I told everybody, get away from the special team. If you're on that next special team, we, you know, we have alerts. You know, punt alert, punt alert. Everybody gets up. You know, it's third down. It's punt alert. I'm flipping offense, defense, saying punt alert, making sure everybody knows. The defense bench, they're making adjustments. Maybe, maybe they were just staring at the iPad, right? You know, like they stare at their phones, they're staring at the iPad, watching the play again. Let me see that again. Let me see what that D tackle did, or whatever it may be. Um, but you know, it's focus. It's a, it's a part of the focus and, and the details that drive you nuts as a coach. And uh, you know, it's great to learn about it. Let it happen in that game. If that had cost us the football game, we'd all you know, we'd all be sick. You know, I might be throwing up right now um, because it would make me sick if that was what caused us to, to lose that football game. So, um, but guys made plays and Maverick had a heck of a block and, and cleaned it up and made it all kind of, and again, it's a learning experience and our guys got to learn from those mistakes.